Well, this is Dave Tubman, the author of the book, Jimmy Hoffa is Missing the Gap. And this is uh, the third, and I'm calling it the final, but I may have kind of a summary that I'll post up after this. Uh, but this is the last phone call I had from my source, who now you know is Alan Kaplan. And he ran the recycling department from 1974 when they first opened up. He helped set up the equipment till uh, after the auction and it shut down in 1977. He was the last employee to leave. Um, he was there. He wasn't in the mob. Uh, he's a good guy, um, but he was friends, good friends with everybody there. Uh, the owners who happened to be, um, you know, mobsters and um, even socially, I guess. But um, he knows a lot of the information. I just, I think there's just some of it he just didn't have inside information on, but uh, the only ones that could answer that would have been the owners. Um, I believe there's a lot of things that point to central sanitation. I don't know for sure, and Alan doesn't know uh, really anything other than what his opinion might be. Uh, he was there the day that Hoffa disappeared, and you'll hear him talk about that. Um, and he heard the chatter at Central Sanitation in the evening before it ever hit the news the following day. So there was communication going on between Russell Buffalino back east and Nick Michelli and the owners. And then he also uh, met up with um, William Buffalino in Detroit uh, to do kind of a mock meeting um, with what the FBI might ask him about regarding what he knows and saw. So um, it's an interesting conversation. Uh, I'll just get right to it right now. And uh, maybe afterwards I'll do kind of a quick summary. But uh, there are, there's a lot of other information that uh, I did not talk about. Um, I kind of knew what he could answer and what he couldn't. And I tried to make the conversation about the questions that all you guys uh, posted up on Facebook and wanted me to ask on your behalf. I think I covered most of them. Okay, so here you go. Enjoy this conversation. Uh, it's about a half hour long. David. Yes. Cal Kaplan. Hi, how are you, Al? I'm good. I'm, I'm, I'm calling to see how you're feeling. Oh, doing a lot better. <laughs> so, how have you been? Oh, good. Yeah. Uh, just, you know, just keep me really busy. Sure. But, um, other than that, what's going on? Anything new with the book? Or um, no. Um, I told you that, you know, some people asked me to... Uh, you know, to ask you a couple of questions. You and I have talked a lot. You know, you but, know, yeah. Well, you know, you know, I did go to that website, Hamtramck. Yeah. And the, that that does, definitely does not look like mob. It looks like it's uh, facilitated by uh, county and um, yeah, maybe waste management. But um, yeah, I, I didn't think so. Yeah. They they took yeah. over in two thousand eleven. Yeah. But, uh, oh, you know what, though? I looked up their address, and even yeah. though it, it looks like it's in the same spot that your old building was, I did a street view, and yeah. a picture popped up of a glass building. That's not one of your buildings, was it? No. It was, like you know, like one of those factory buildings that had a lot of glass panes in it. It was on Craig Street, I think. No, 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 okay. no. So that was had nothing to do with uh, your buildings. No. Okay. Not that I'm aware. Not that I'm aware of. Um, you know, one day when I have a chance, I like to take a drive down there. Oh yeah. Um, if I can remember how to get there. Um, yeah, it's off of Joseph Campo and the and the freeway there. I know that. Yeah. Well, it's uh, what was it? N yeah. Now it's it's not Moran. It's called Hamtramck. Oh really? Yeah. No, so Moran, I, I would, you know, yeah. I for, yeah interesting, I, interesting. Yeah, I forget when they when they built the uh, Wayne County Jail on supposedly the same spot, but it, it's hard to tell. You know, when you look at an aerial view of that area, uh, there's a yeah. lot of vacant land behind there. Uh, did Central Sanitation go right up to the railroad tracks? Yeah, yeah. No, the railroad tracks actually came into the building. Oh. 
Okay. We loaded, I personally loaded rail cars. Yeah, you with, told me that. With cardboard going to the paper mills. Uh huh. Along with, we had a, um, a dock for trailers. Right. We load, you know, shipped that way. Was that in the um, same building as your compactor, or was yeah. that a. Oh, okay. So the other building you didn't load or you just stored your bundles? The other up. building, the uh, um, uh, price of corrugated was so low, no no paper mills were purchasing at that time. Yeah. But we had all this cardboard coming in, so what do you do with it? You know, uh, yeah. you got to bail it and keep running uh -huh. at, at a loss. At a loss. Well, uh, do you want me to run a couple of questions by that they've asked that I, I don't think I've ever asked you about? Sure, go ahead. Okay. Um, you, you pretty much described to me how you started. You helped set it up with the cranes and the equipment. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, did, did. you did tell me about that. Um, it, how did you get your job, by the way? Was it because you knew them or your family knew them? My father-in-law at that time was a major uh, General Mills Supply Company. Oh, mm -hmm. was a major, major uh, paper broker, and um, and they sent uh, Nick Michelli to my house to offer me a job. And that's the first you met him, I take it, right? Yeah, yeah. He, he drove all all the way out to my house and offered me the job, and you know, so I took it. Yeah, right. Well, but then him and I got along like, yeah. like really big time friends, yeah. So um, a couple of the things they asked about was, uh, you know, they're interested in the personal aspect. They're not, everybody's not uh, just into the Hoffa thing, but nobody ever talks about Central, and you've, you've given me quite a bit of a description. But um, you had two buildings, you said, and then there was like a main area apart from the buildings you said about a block away we had one building oh we know we had an office where i sat right and then walk yeah i could walk to the uh you know recycling plant right where the conveyors were and everything else and maybe 50 feet away right but around but around the block was a larger building and that's where we had to uh store all the non-sold, right. corrugated uh, rails of paper. I see. So, um, as far as the rail car, did that come into the same building as the compactor, or was that the storage building, the warehouse? No, actually it came in where the compactor was. Oh, okay. And you described to me that uh, the trucks would come and uh, dispose of their... Uh, material on the floor and then you would kind of sort through them or use a bobcat to... we, we had well we had a bobcat yes and but we had clean cardboard that came in from the supermarkets yeah and that, that was dumped on one side and that went on one conveyor and then um, other loads that came in uh, from roll-offs that was um, had partial um, cardboard in it would mm -hmm. dump on the other side of the aisle and it would go on another uh, conveyor belt over running higher than the primary conveyor belt which led directly into the baler itself I see and we had we had four people positioned up there pulling off the corrugated and throwing it back down onto the main conveyor that led to um, to the uh, baler uh -huh. and, and then it would transfer out. We had a uh, a compactor outside where that garbage um, conveyor system would dump it and compress it. And every time it was full, it would it'd run it off to the landfill. Uh, but you only so had the. It, it, was, it was the idea of recovering the most stuff. Uh, right. Um, a corrugated that you could. So and, what, and reducing your landfill costs. Yeah, and uh, so d d you only had the one compactor, though, correct? Right. Okay. So I saw in some other articles that Central had contracts with 
the incinerators, remember there was uh, three or four incinerators that the city ran, but uh, Central had a contract with them to incinerate some of their refuse. Do you, are you familiar with that at all? They didn't close no. that down until 2000 something. No, no, they didn't have contracts with them. Uh, their, their friend did, and a Sicilian guy. Oh. And I was friends with him. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, um, yeah, they, they would try to use it for uh, to generate heat or something. Oh, um, I see. And to burn it. But um, now it was Central had no incinerator um, contracts. I see. Um, so uh, here's a couple other things. Um, they were asking kind of, uh, you knew pretty much everybody there, not just the bosses, like you said. You knew the, you know, you knew the drivers and stuff like that, right? I, I, I good friends with everyone. Yeah. yeah. So one guy actually, he lives in Canada and he works at a recycling place and he asked... Um, kind of a, a brief idea of what it was like for the drivers did did they like you you mentioned you had a couple of garbage trucks otherwise they were all roll-off trucks correct right and did the did both of them deposit into your building or or just the roll-offs just, just the roll-offs okay yeah. so when these garbage trucks though had stuff where did they take their stuff to the landfill to a landfill was that the one in South Lyon? No, no, no. Um, South Lyon's way too north. It was—I uh, can't remember the name of it. Okay, it but it wasn't Tri County. It was a landfill, right? Well, Tri County was a facility. Um, they didn't have a landfill there. You couldn't dump garbage right. there. Um, I read about one that was located at the intersection of I-75 and I-94. Um, I think it was Inkster and Van Born Road over in um, Dearborn Heights. Does that sound like that? No. No? no? Okay. No, no. It, it was further out. I, you know. Maybe out more towards Wixom? No, you're going west and north. This was uh, down I-75. Um... I, I just can't remember the name of the uh, landfill. Oh, okay. But uh, it was uh, in the, totally not in the direction that you're thinking of. Yeah. If I if I mentioned a couple of streets, would would it maybe ring a bell? Because I had a map yeah, of one. Yeah. Uh, there was yeah. one. Let's see if I can find that. Uh, yeah. Okay, here's one. It's it's at. Um, Ewell Road or Elwell Road and Willow Road in Monroe, Monroe County or something township, Sumter Township. No, no, it wasn't Monroe. Okay. No. Well, that's that's no big deal. I was just curious because the only one I heard about was the one that I think the some of the trucks would take to Lion Development. Uh, does that ring a bell? No. Okay. No. Well, if you think of it, let me know, because to me, it might be a connection, because, um, you know, unless they just, like I said, they might have actually cut up the body over at the Raleigh house, and then, like you said, who would recognize it if it was mixed in with a bunch of stuff? But um, nobody knows, and it, it, it's not all that important. Um, so you told me one time about the day that Hoffa disappeared. <laughs> you said you worked late. Yeah. And and I think you even said you heard chatter that people were talking about Russell, Russell, Russell Buffalino called, and you kind of knew about it the same day it happened. You didn't. No, I, I was there when he called. Nick Mitchell, was there. Yeah. And uh, um, I can't remember who else, but. Uh, I remember him getting a phone call from uh, Buffalino. Yeah. And um, and then shortly after the FBI, you know, came in. Oh, they did. Okay. And, and then these guys, like Dominic Rado and uh, um, some other people, it could be my suspicion is that they were not allowed 
to be in that area, to be in that facility. You're right. Perhaps because of selling Tri County to waste management. And then waste me, and then they took it all away from waste management and started their own new company. Yeah, and that's what I think they're all afraid of. You are absolutely right, Alan. Um, I I read they were convicted on earlier charges, and uh, they were told to stay away. And then I think that's when Ronald Roxburgh uh, and Nick Michelli took it on. Um, no, Ronnie was. He was a what treasurer. He, he was just a social. Okay, but Nick Michelli was an owner. Ronnie, if I remember correctly, Ronnie took over market vending. Oh, I see. He had a large large company that bought out market vending. Mm Mm-hmm. Well, when I looked up... Market market vending is where all the the, uh, Teamsters met. Yep. And it it was uh, Babe Bushkin owned it. Hmm. Dave Bushkin was a good friend of my father's. Uh huh. I've only heard the name, so the only thing I know about him is what you've mentioned. But um, uh, he ran the grocery union, I think. Uh huh. I see. No, he was he was a big time guy, and he and he ran with a guy named I. They called him Joe Monkey. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Holtzman is his real name. Holtzman. Okay. Oh yeah. yeah. He was good friends with my mother and father. Yeah, I think you mentioned that before. Um, I was yeah. I was looking over some of our previous calls and notes and stuff, but um, but getting back to the day though, uh, when you heard about that call, those calls from Ruffalino, was that like late in the afternoon or was that earlier in the day? It was evening, I think. Evening, and you said you worked late. Yeah. About how late do you think you worked? It was dark, I imagine. Well, I knew there was something going on, and um, for some reason, I can't remember exactly why. Yeah. We out, you know. Just a feeling? Um, stayed there. So, so yeah. is, is it a feeling that you had? No, I, I had no idea about half of them, but um, yeah. then it started coming in. So you, you, know, you were the first you people know. to even hear about You heard about it before it was even news. Yeah. Wow. Do you remember what they were talking about? Or just you heard the name Hoffa mentioned or something? Um, well, it was kind of weird for uh, Nick seemed to uh, a tight and he took a call from Buffalino. Yeah. And then, and I told you, they then they sent me to uh, Buffalino, Buffalino here, the attorney. Yeah, William. Yeah. Well, uh, you... You kind of told me a little bit about the um, the mock meeting you had where they were all up in arms. Oh, yeah, oh, oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, they, <laughs> way, where they, where they, they all stood up. So they were <laughs> nervous. They were so <laughs> weren't allowed to be there. Right. And being an honest little Jewish boy, <laughs> <laughs> they, uh, um, you know, I wasn't aware, and uh, that's when they wanted to send me to their Buffalo, you know, Detroit attorney. Right. And I told you all that stuff. So, yeah, but you know. nothing really came of it. Is that right? That fuck no. Um, he wanted me to come back and uh, make a tape. Yeah. For him to store it, and I said okay. <laughs> like I'll <laughs> ever see him again. <laughs> well, you said the FBI came in. You don't mean that day, do you? You mean some other time? No, I, I was constantly getting calls from uh, Alex Alexander, uh-huh. who was in, in the FBI. Right. And I was at that time retained by the court receiver receivership. And I had a meeting with one of the supermarkets, one of our major accounts, Um to try to save the account after all this happened. Right. And before I walked into my meeting with the receiver, um, Alex Alexander was walking out. He said, good luck, Alan. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's right. You said uh, you passed each other in an elevator or something. Is that right? No, no, no. Just on the main floor. Oh, just yeah. on the main floor? And was that at the courthouse? <laughs> <laughs> no, 
was not. Where was that at? It was at the uh, supermarket's uh, office. Oh, oh, okay. <laughs> do, do you know if, you know, there? I had two do opposite stories. One said that the FBI came to Central with dogs. And another one said, no, no they didn't. So what do, you, what do you, what's your take on that? No, they didn't. Okay. Because one even said that they never even uh, executed a search warrant. Do you think that's true? One said, um, you know, some people said that they had an ex they executed a search warrant and came there with dogs, but they didn't find anything. But it, that was according to that guy you mentioned, Stephen Brill. And oh, he, he, he's an idiot. He, he wrote a book. Yeah. And it was, none of it was true. He was so far off course, it was amazing. Right. I had no direct contact with him, but... Um, um, he was totally wrong. Yeah, he did write a book, The Teamsters. It was called. Yeah. I, I, as a matter of fact, I have it. Time. Yeah. He, none, none of it was true. Right. And he's probably the one that really pushed that incinerator story. Yeah. Yeah. Could be. But uh, so they never did show up. Then I can I can pretty much count on that being true, right? Who? Oh, uh, FBI and dog? No. Yeah, okay. You know, on that uh, website for Hamtramck Recycling, uh, I don't know if that was anything like... Uh, I looked at that video that they had, how they processed all the materials that was brought in. And they had a bunch of people on conveyor belts. That's not like it was back then, right? There, 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 could, have, there could have been some people on conveyor belts. And... Yeah, okay. Did they ever come in... The FBI did, or did it? Was it just a done deal after the Hoffa thing blew down, blew away? It was, they didn't, they never did show up. Is that right? Well, they wanted me to, you know, come in for an interview, and um, I always avoided it. Yeah. And um, and they never bothered me. So they didn't come looking for you at work. No. Okay. No. I, you know, you have to understand. On the other side, my in-laws, um, who ran General Mill, yeah. their father was uh, Julius Roenberg, who hmm. started off in the streets of Detroit with a horse and buggy and picking up uh, anything to recycle. Yeah. Hmm. Well, he, he became really big time. And... Um, he had friends on the uh, um, probation department. Right. He had big time people. And when I talked to him, when I was at Central, he would say, you know, Alan, I just want to make sure that if you see anything going on that's wrong, you let me know. Right. And please be careful. And then it's the same thing that Uncle Pete would tell me. Right. So... It was an interesting lifestyle. <laughs> yeah. Well, that, that's that's cool. Um, so, let's see. I don't think there's anything else you you can tell me about the day Hoffa disappeared, uh, unless somebody else came by there. But oh, you did say Tony Jackaloni came by before that time though, and walked around. Yeah, the... he, he did. Yeah. And which was unusual because I had never seen him come there before. Yeah, and the, the one guy asked about it because he says he wondered why someone would come there if the if they knew that the feds were had eyes on Central, why someone would come by. But I think you told me that's why it seems so awkward because he was never there before. Is that right? Yeah. So he just kind of walked around near the compactor and you guys didn't talk. We, we, we didn't talk. I was on top and operating the compactor. Yeah. And um, and I just turned around and saw him. Right. And he was just standing there observing. Huh. And that was all. No, nothing more than that. And oh. it was actually Uncle Pete's brother, Jasper, that used to run the uh, um, the bailer. Yeah. What do you mean? He was running it at the time or you were? No, he was running it most of the time. Oh, I see. But you were up there helping or something? Well, I, I 
know, I would go up there and mm -hmm. um, run it when no one was there. And it had a strapping system from U.S. Steel yeah. that didn't always, always work properly. So I was out there a lot fixing it. Yeah, you told me you broke your finger one time. Um, yeah, oh, yeah, but that wasn't from that. that was, yeah, that's, that's not from the baler? It wasn't. I, we couldn't get a bale pushed out um, from the baler. Uh -huh. So we put a piece of iron in and and thought it would give us more force to push it out. Right. And I was at the bottom inside the baler when they applied the uh, pressure and the piece of steel slipped, crossed my stomach, scratched it all up, oh. and broke my wedding ring finger. Yeah. And the ring itself was broken. I had to go in for, uh, have a pin put in. Right. Well, but, uh, you know what? What they really respected about me was, um, two days later, I was there huh. in a big hand cast on a high low loading a rail car. <laughs> <laughs> how long, how long was Jack Looney there when he visited? Do you remember? Yes, very short time, maybe half an hour, hour. I, I have no idea. Okay. I mean, I was there. He could have gone back in the office. I, I mean, I, right. He could, would have been out of sight of mine. Right. So you, you told me you were the last employee to leave there. Was there more than one fire or just that one? Just that one. Okay. So here's, here's the big question. And you can say no comment or whatever you want. But since I know the whole story, is there anything that you you would be comfortable with sharing about the cause of the fire and all that? No, no. Okay. I wouldn't. All right. That's fine. But you do. it's okay to say that you believe it was money-oriented, though, right? They, they were hurting. They couldn't find buyers for the materials, and you believe that I, that... I, I already told you... Um, Story that um, I was going to leave. I had an old friend from high school, or from when I was eight years old, yeah. coming to my house for dinner that night. I told Nick about it, and he said, "Okay, leave early." You know what? In fact, go to the Grecian Gardens, which Uncle Pete owned yeah. in Greektown, um, and they'll give you whatever you want. You know, <laughs> and no charge. Yep. And then he said, no, but do me a favor. Put a gallon of gasoline by the other building. Mm -hmm. um, I got to do some work tonight. Yeah. So then I go home having a dinner with my friends and wife. And I get a phone call from Nick. And he said, turn on TV. Turn down the TV. Well, that building was burning down. <laughs> <laughs> and you got called in, you said. <laughs> you got and called I in to work, to, huh? Oh, right back to work. Yeah, you went right back to work. That must have been a late night because I understood they didn't put it out till about two a.m. <laughs> yeah, it was a very late night. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, Alan, you had some experience there that you could write a book about <laughs> if if you wanted to. <laughs> I, I know, but I know. all in all. All in all, I think, um, you know, you really enjoyed, you know, all the people that you knew and everything. It sounds like you... you I, I got everybody great. Yeah. You know? <laughs> and those are really uh, historical times in Detroit. I mean, geez. But uh, nobody, nobody will ever know, uh, you know, what really happened. So whatever you and I say is really just opinion and conjecture, and they'll never find a body. <laughs> no, no, maybe they won't. No. no. But uh, anyway. So there you have it. Uh, I did edit out a lot of the personal conversation we had. He, he was very... Uh, Caring, he asked how I was doing. I told him I didn't just have the flu. I ended up, I had COVID, and we talked about that a little bit, but I, I didn't want to belabor you guys with that conversation. Um, 
And just a little personal thing, he has a his 97-year-old mother that he takes care of, and that's what he meant by his, he has a lot of demands on his time, and he was apologizing for not getting back to me sooner. But he actually called me on the 25th, and um, uh, normally I've been calling him and bugging him <laughs> to, to talk to me about Central. Um, my conversation with him uh, basically answered most of the questions but one question came up that I didn't get an answer to and where this landfill was uh, away from central sanitation. Uh, he mentioned it, I tried to figure out what he was talking about and all I had was addresses of incinerators in the area that I had heard read that central had uh, contracts with incinerators that the city operated and waste management. Uh, he mentioned waste management a couple of times. Um, he did verify when he looked at the uh, Hamtramck recycling website and they have pictures of all the owners. They're young. They were not around in 1975, but he said it's not mobbed up. It's probably run by the city or some other waste management company, but he didn't believe mob was involved in uh, the current recycling uh, processing plant that's on the same site. It's listed as 3333 Moran. Um, I mean, uh, Hamtramck uh, Road. It's kind of uh, ironic. Another recycling place would open up in that exact same spot. There's nothing else behind uh, either the um, uh, Wayne County Jail. That you can see there's open space undeveloped and also surrounding this, these buildings that are over there off of Denton and uh, Hamtramck Road. And I think Craig is also one of the streets there. I'm going to share some other things uh, again with my next video, but uh, as far as uh, hounding Alan with all these questions, I don't think he really knows anything else. He's repeated himself a little bit, uh, as you noticed, and um, I asked him several times about the FBI coming there. He swears they never did, not with dogs, not without dogs. They did contact him several times to try and get him to come and talk to him, but he said he avoided them. And he also avoided uh, William Buffalino after he went there once. Uh, he didn't want to go back again. <laughs> so um, anyway, and it was shortly after they closed that uh, Nick Michelli uh, and everybody was getting indicted, arrested, and Michelli turned state's evidence against his father-in-law, Peter Vitale, and uh, ended up, um, instead of being killed, um, supposedly he just moved his family to California and got out of the way. Um, his obituary said he died of a heart attack, so um, who knows. So stay tuned and I'll be posting up a follow-up uh, and um, I may refer to it as part four, but it's, it's my summary of everything that we've talked about.